Jeffrey Cross is a veteran drug industry analyst and CEO of Crystal Research Associates, an independent equity research firm. He joins us now with his assessment of what's ahead. Jeff, welcome to you. Good to be back. All right, so let's talk the political implications. First, is the uh, health care reform bill dead on arrival here? It's close. There, this, this was clearly a message, while Brown said it's not a message, it clearly was a message by the citizens that the plan that's in place, which would be a large undertaking, the largest undertaking, economic undertaking ever put in place by the United States government, is not in a shape or form where it can be passed in finality right now. If it is, it's a major problem for all the citizens. So it's going to take less of the backroom deals. It's going to take fine tuning. It's going to take, not you don't want to have a health care plan in place, but you want to have the right health care plan in place. It's going to take bipartisanship. It's going to take bipartisanship. And right now, it, that's not the way it's structured, and it's not, a good, it's not a good plan right now. Given all the compromises and conditions, what do you think a final health care bill needs to look like to get passage? I think a final health care bill needs to have, you know, different states that are vying that have a medical school and a dental school getting 100 or 150 or 200 million dollars and all these backroom deals that are in that plan in different places out. This is a plan about improving the overall health and the well-being of the citizens of your country. This is not a plan about, well, you know, he cut a deal for me, he cut a deal. This is about fixing the health care system. The health care system is broke. So Senator-elect Brown had it right there. That's correct. Incentivize, the federal government should incentivize the states. Should the plan look like the plan currently in place in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? The plan in the state of Massachusetts works for that state, but every state has its own different vagrancies that, that, that work for it. What needs to be in place is a plan that works for as many people as possible, and that plan is not in place right now. You do not want to disincentivize doctors. You do not want to disincentivize healthcare companies. The two primary factors that help keep you alive from doing their job. I don't think the American public wants a doctor getting $200 for a specific condition like cancer. And sorry, I can only spend a minute with you because I only get $200 for your cancer condition. I don't think the health care, uh, the people out there want it, drug companies not to make money. They're the ones who are incentivized to keep you alive. You want them to make money off of drugs because you want them to come up with drugs so that you can enjoy a higher quality of life, a better quality of life. And people have to remember, less than 10 cents of every dollar spent on health care is pharmaceuticals. So you're going to increase more, you're going to take more drugs to help yourself stay alive longer, not less drugs. Now, what does all this mean for the healthcare industry? I thought it was funny. Healthcare stocks rally on prospects of less government involvement yesterday, right? Healthcare stocks rally on prospects of millions more people covered under the current reform proposal. So how do you sort all that out? What, at the end of the day, is, does it mean well, for the healthcare industry? At, at, at the end of the day, we're going to hope that they come through with a more rational plan for everyone that is beneficial to everyone. So they take a step back, they get a plan, hit the reset button, and come up with something that's better. But it begs the it, question, then, is if you say a rational plan, does that mean the plan in its current form is irrational? It's irrational. Why? Uh, it's an irrational plan because the participants that you would like to have disincentivized, the ones that you want to really, if you really want to control health care costs, you really want to improve health care, then you have to put incentives in place for the people who are really going to have an impact on health care. The doctors can have a positive impact on health care. The pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies can have a positive impact on health care. Sure, giving the biotech companies 12 years patent life, that helps, but you want to put more incentives in place for the pharmaceutical companies. They had an $80 billion give back. You want to protect the patents. You want to protect the guys that are coming up with the innovative products. Right now, a lot of the items that are in that health care plan are not incentivizing health care companies, medical device companies, insurance companies to do the right thing. It's more of volumes going through, not necessarily the right things so going through. So are you through. buying the shares of the insurance companies, the drug companies? I'm not buying the shares of the insurance companies. The insurance companies obviously will have to take on people with pre-existing conditions. I don't think that's going to go away. They're going to get an increased number of people who have to have health care. That's certainly going to help them. If the health care plan didn't go through, it would be bad for a lot of people. It would be bad for health care. Pharmaceutical companies wouldn't see the volume of their sales. Generic companies wouldn't have increased utilization of their drugs. Drug distributors certainly, and the, the people who write prescriptions, like Express Scripts, those guys would lose. So it sounds like it might be a little bit premature to make uh, long-term calls on the health care industry. Long-term calls are not there, stick with innovation, stick with large cap pharma, biotechs, so you'll do fine. Innovative okay. companies will always do well. All right, Jeff Cross, many thanks. Jeff yeah, is the CEO so and co-founder of Crystal Research Associates. Well, Warren Buffett's stock split made some big news today. Berkshire Hathaway voted yes on splitting B shares to fund the purchase of Burlington Northern. More on that next.